Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Talk to Sven. Firstly, allow me to thank you for all the comments you've made and the questions you've posed. And of course, uh, maybe I can just ask you uh, as well. We had quite a few questions around the timing. If you have suggestions about timing of this uh, session, please let us uh, know and we will see how we can change that if there's a need for it. Now, I'm very excited today and a very special welcome to the, the community of the hearing impaired uh, who will join us from today. Welcome and I'm exciting, excited to have you. Um, of course, and then we have the famous uh, Salman, uh, uh, Salma Moses uh, with us, who is the sign interpreter. Um, and Salma, wonderful to have you. Thank you for being with us today. Um, today we'll be continuing on digital innovation. Many people have asked what an important and interesting topic it is. And uh, I know many have asked that we invite um, certain speakers from uh, last week. So um, I have really um, talked and thought about this topic a lot more. And what I discovered is that, you know, in the business world today, we, uh, we don't spend enough time on, on the potential of business. If you look at uh, when, how board meetings are run today, uh, we have the audit committees, which is a subcommittee of the board meeting, and there we have a ri risk register and a risk discussion happens. But we suddenly have a discussion on the potential and what else we could do. So this shows you what else is there. And I think what happens is that we plan for the ordinary and we'll, or are surprised if we get the ordinary and not the extraordinary. So maybe we have to think extraordinary to, to get the extraordinary. Now, very important as well. Many people always say, maybe it's not another place for, for um, say, for uh, agriculture or maybe it's not a place for technical people and so forth. I, really, I had to surprise you that, you know, countries like Israel, um, they uh, have become the one of the freshwater richest uh, countries per capita in the world. Um, and they live in a desert. So anything is possible. And I think we as Namibians need to um, think about this from a possibility point of view. And, of course, uh, we invited back none other than our Lucy May. <laughs> Lucy May, who is here with us again. And Lucy May Lebrani Slaber. She's the digital uh, marketing manager at Namibia Breweries, um, um, and we really would like to share more in your knowledge and your experience, um, and especially after last week's uh, very exciting uh, discussion. Lucy May, um, this whole digital uh, world, digital innovation, yes. I mean, uh, I, what I've always feel now, and that we talk about digital and many people um, battle with what that actually means. And I think I've asked you actually, let's spend a bit of more time and look at examples yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and what, what happens if you don't embrace digital and what happens if you do? And uh, maybe um, you could start just a, with a short recap yeah. so that we have our viewers um, and all on one page. On the radar. On the radar, yeah. Thanks, Welcome. Sven, to uh, having me again. Thanks for the privilege of participating and contributing to this uh, brilliant platform, which is Talk to Sven. And thanks also to the viewers um, of Talk to Sven for uh, having requested uh, my participation again. Um, correct. Um, I uh, currently work for the Namibia Breweries uh, on uh, driving the digital agenda. And um, my background, as mentioned last time, is um, I come from Europe, but I'm an adopted Namibian. Hence, also with you, I have at heart the future of the, of the country and how my kids and our families can contribute to that in the future. And digital, it is in the landscape of uh, the future. We talked about uh, fourth industrial revolution. We yeah. talked about we had there were previous three ones, and this is the fourth. So to put our viewers of today in context with what we discussed there and then, um, I propose to uh, run again that extract from the World Economic yeah, Forum. Sure. Very insightful. Let's have a look at uh, that extract.
It's a fourth industrial revolution. It's a fusion of the physical, the digital, and the biological world. It's changing not only what we are doing, it's changing who we are. It's really the notion of digital technology pervasively impacting every walk of life and every vertical industry on all parts of the globe. Whether it's information technology and the acceleration we see in artificial intelligence, a lot is happening. Society and how we're going to live is being defined right now. So speed is mind-boggling. What I particularly concerned about is how little the world is prepared. Harnessing this revolution requires the involvement of all stakeholders, from public and private sectors to academia and civil society. The World Economic Forum Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution Network ensures that the development and application of emerging technologies benefits both people and the planet. It is a network of centers for scalable impact, with locations in the United States, Japan, India and China, bringing together stakeholders to identify the impacts of these technologies, co-design innovative governance protocols and policy frameworks, and pilot them with partners around the world. If we are not innovative, if we're not creative enough, it will be very difficult to survive in this century. Humans and machines are assisting each other, augmenting each other with skills. Humanity itself will be changed with this super intelligence, and we are at the doorstep of that era. The technologies available today will impact and change healthcare forever. 52% of the encounters with our primary care physicians were handled virtually. Just a massive change. The network will work closely to share research, analysis and learning, and help design new technologies in ways that respect societal values. It's where innovation is happening, about how we guide this revolution. We can solve the many the social issues through the digital technologies. My hope is that we have a robust discussion for how this can truly help our world solve some of the hard-pressed challenges that we have today. Together, we can shape a future that truly benefits and empowers people. The world has changed. We can never, ever go back to yesterday. Yeah, I'm... Um... And I think the last comment is very important. We never can go back to yesterday. <laughs> and I think post-COVID, uh, yeah. Lucy May, uh, there's everything. Dramatic but nothing change. can be yep. the same as today and Absolutely. yesterday. So, yep. uh, very relevant topic. Absolutely. COVID um, forced um, what we call digital acceleration. Acceleration is just embracing digital innovation at speed. Mm. So... With, with the biggest terms we're in the uh, landscape of digital, we talk usually about digital innovation, acceleration, and transformation. Mm -hmm. Transformation is key for many of the, in the boardrooms, for many of the companies, to how do we tackle this beast? Yeah. Here I brought um, quickly a, um, a, one of the extracts of the slides from last time uh, to put in context what is the underlying uh, piece uh, to understand what digital is doing in our lives. The, the golden thread for digital innovation is actually data or these huge sets, mm. torrents of big data that needs to be funneled. As we said last time, big data, what it is this big data? It's just every time that there is a transaction and is captured through in, in the format of data, then that is goes in this big pool called the big data. So data can be structured and structured, but the point is that this is how machines and technology and all of that are talking to each other and communicating. Mm -hmm. The impressive things is that just 20 years ago, we, all these correlations were not possible. Mm -hmm. Data has changed because now is highly connected, is at speed, uh, basically sometimes you don't even uh, need to, to wait at all, it happens on the spot, and it provides insights to our, um, to our businesses, but also to our, in our lifestyles. Think about wearables or sports wearables. Um, the other interesting thing that I um, highlighted last time about data is, however, how little it has been used. So according to SAP in 2018, um, they, according to their research, they claimed that only 1% 
of uh, the data that companies actually are capturing are using that to, to the benefit of the competitive edge. Mm. This is extremely interesting. Mm. So what I've done uh, to your request today is I've put together uh, the famous and infamous cases, cases of yeah. digital innovation. You know, on that topic, I mean, that's what I was mentioned earlier, that, um, you know, we discuss too many times of all the ordinary matters, the risk matters, but we miss the opportunities. And yeah. I think there um, also a, um, a comment was made on, uh, on, on, on the Talk to Sven yeah. site uh, about, um, you know, what do we do? Yes. When the senior management are not uh, coming along and not understanding this, I think, I think very, very important. I think uh, the the last um, survey they've done, maybe as an average population of 21 yeah. years, and what a reason for management to really embrace digital. And you know, yeah. we knowing that our younger people, youth are, are it is it is their their yes. things, their media, it's their yeah. communication to yeah. whatever it is. But um, how important that is, and I think so. So your next uh, um, yeah. discussion now is of good examples when yes. people embrace it, and not and so much. It's not <laughs> exactly. Um, to your point, there are demographics. Uh, obviously, intuitively, one would say the younger generation has been more exposed, thanks for peak pieces like social media, correct? Um, but it's very true that who makes a decision at the end of the day is the board members with the exco. Um, to your point, last time there was a, a, a very tricky question asking, what do you do if the, uh, you know, if the leadership is not into it? Um, we were saying it is definitely the hot issue. Um, it is one of the reasons why COVID-19 has been referred to the biggest digital accelerator because <laughs> suddenly everybody had to communicate and rely on, uh, on the internet. Uh, but the truth is that what I mentioned last time is that with the strong culture of conversations and actually allowing people and, uh, to, to actually exchange ideas, then the, the digital transformation is accelerated. Mm. Uh, but it's, it, it is truth that there are um, obstacles or challenges on the path to it. Sure. So it's about keeping the conversation alive most of the time. Yeah. Um, and I also mentioned last time this uh, interesting quote from uh, the Accenture CEO. Uh, he referred to uh, you know any companies not embracing nowadays uh, digital innovation is meant to uh, basically come out of uh, Fortune 500, uh, which obviously is the ranking of the best companies worldwide. I think I have um, the uh, a quote yep. from uh, yeah Pierre Lambert, and. Uh, and people were asking me, so which are those companies? Uh, I brought another slide showing uh, a sample of who are those companies. So those companies are your Kodak, Toys R Us, your National Geographic to a certain extent, uh, Hitachi, Toshiba, Borders, uh, Pets.com, Blackberry. So a few, there, there's actually a few. Yeah. <laughs> a few Forgot about cases. that one already. <laughs> I, I correct. Do you remember back in the BBM mm -hmm. days? Now we don't talk BBM anymore. <laughs> so we are definitely, uh, there's definitely a, a huge transition. Probably back in the days, this transition was in a, in a longer extension of time. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about years. Months, weeks, sometimes seconds, correct? Correct. And here I'm referring to the, the quick, clickable things that in a, in, a, in a click you can have things as a consumer or as a customer. Mm -hmm. So I refer to a digital innovation postponed mm -hmm. when, um, when trying to uh, dig out those uh, infamous cases mm -hmm. of uh, huge giants uh, in the marketplace internationally that unfortunately lost, uh, you know, didn't catch the boat. Yeah. One of them being Kodak. We were laughing the other day about Kodak, correct? Because that is a, is a company that maybe <laughs> the younger generation would not even remember. It, they used to, they do filming products. Um, so from your cameras to your printing your pictures, thinking about today printing pictures, we're thinking, what? <laughs> you know, yeah. The time that goes into it. Yeah. So in 2001, um, Kodak, probably is one of the uh, most interesting story because in 2001, they were already um, investing in digital innovation. They were probably the first ones with having a digital camera, but they hesitated in, um, 
uh, investing further and, and actually commercialize that. Why? Because what they thought is, well, this new digital um, market, uh, this new digital camera might cannibalize the uh, products that actually are selling well today. Mm. So they thought today as opposed to thinking of the future. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they, they lost that and they actually sold the patent to their um, uh, benchmark uh, competition. And they went up. And nowadays we don't talk anymore about Kodak. <laughs> the other thing that they did is that they, and not everybody knows this, but they bought... Um, a, uh, a platform called Ophoto, which you can e equalize it today to your Instagram. And instead of creating a platform of content where people can actually exchange pictures, they transform it into a print your pictures through this platform. That, how obsolete that, that sounds today, mm. pretty much quite a bit. So this is the story of Kodak. Kodak basically went out, was wiped out by the competitors and by Apple and Amazon and all of those that embraced digital innovation. The next, I mean, that's this example yeah. that uh, there's an opportunity for everyone. Yes. You know, and that's what's so interesting about this, that um, how, do we, how, we, how, do we, how do we access ideas and thoughts of people yeah. that can actually... Yeah. As you can see, yes. destroy a company. Absolutely, absolutely. And probably the next case actually um, helps, you know, supports a bit also this idea of you cannot have a crystal ball to uh, predict the future. And I will ask uh, quickly our studio if they can um, put that uh, slide where you have your Kodak and the next case was Blockbuster. So Blockbuster, again, another giant company that not all generations will remember what they were doing. Blockbuster was your um, video renting, correct? You would rent a video, you would go at home and you would watch it. Um, shame, I actually feel a bit uh, for Blockbuster because uh, they had the chance there and then, back in the days where the, when sort of the renting the videos wasn't going well anymore, to, to buy Netflix, which today Netflix is this multi-billion uh, company and with with COVID probably they saw this as huge yeah, spikes I'm and sure. there's no turning back right so at the time the CEO referred in 2000 referred to, block, uh, to Netflix as a very small niche business imagine how he feels today <laughs> that, that the he was a very <laughs> small niche businessman <laughs> probably that he is was the thing. thinking of the ordinary exactly exactly you and as you said at the beginning the ordering versus the extraordinary so it's really about rallying towards your ambitions as a company and making sure that everyone is on it. Then the, uh, the most famous uh, recent case of, uh, of um, digital innovation not embraced correctly is Yahoo. Uh, everybody would know Yahoo. We all probably at some point have a, had a Yahoo email account. <laughs> what Yahoo failed at is, um, and I think I, I also put it there, the biggest risk is actually not taking the risk. So what they feel that is that when search engine started becoming a trend, they didn't invest in it. They outsourced it to Google, basically, you know, opening this giant space for Google. What Yahoo used to do, they used to be a directory of actually ranking website. But who needs that? Now with the search engine, you have these little, we call it spiders, on the back end, fetching the exact information that you want according to your keywords that you input in your search bar. Uh, today we have algorithm that can help actually that search engine. So that is the piece that they um, oversee, saw when they didn't invest in it. The other piece that they didn't invest in is uh, Facebook. Mm. I don't know if everybody knows this, but Yahoo was about to buy Facebook. And they hesitated in doing that um, in, a, in a sort of a bargaining deal. They tried to get Facebook for a lower price and fail, uh, Facebook bailed back and said, you know what, we're not interested anymore. And that's the story of digital innovation postponed. I've also, in the next um, step of it, I've introduced actually companies that embrace digital innovation but didn't do it with the adequate um, setup. Mm -hmm. And to that, we have our famous Nike. You wouldn't say Nike is one of the, you know, the one that, a company that could fail. They did fail a little bit. They, back in 2000, they had this leg called Digital Sport, 
when you have those wearables that we were talking about earlier on uh, that provides data, correct? So the problem is that at some point, very quickly in 2014, they realized that, hold on, we have all this data, but we're not using it. And guess what? They didn't have the infrastructure to actually make any profit out of the, or that edge that SAP talked about, to make anything about that data. So they quickly had to shut down digital sport and actually renew it with, uh, with another name uh, later on. So that is nice to you. Uh, also the big giants, uh, they, they would find some um, detour, but the whole principle of failing, as you, 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 you tell also to the company all the time, is not about sticking down there, it's actually how you come up. Mm. And Nike learned the lessons there and then. Mm. The other example, uh, is General Electric. So they were very ambitious. They wanted to uh, create a new source of income by having General Electric software. What they did is that they pushed a lot of uh, projects on this one vein of the company, spreading it too thin to the point that the, uh, the, the, the team that actually was working on these multiple projects actually was spread too thin. And that is when also they sort of flopped. They had to sell a General Electric's digital, and now they're focusing in what they're doing at best and the products that they, they do best. So focus and resources is also a key point mm -hmm. of it. But probably the most, the one that actually um, uh, is the most symbolic in terms of having the three pillars of transformation uh, in one place is BBC News. BBC News was early in its uh, digital media initiative uh, in 2008, early in comparison to, to actually what the time was and the clarity about digital innovation was. Um, they prioritized technology too much, far too much, without actually making sure that the culture within the company and the processes supporting and assisting that technology was in par. This is what, this is it's the typical example where if you don't have the three of them, the three components under the radar, you end up spending a lot of money. Who says so? The auditing company that actually came afterwards, they said, you were very good at employing or, or, yeah. or getting the, uh, your technology consultant, but you didn't take care of the business agility or the smart process with it and the human connection, the mindset, the culture. Very important. I think uh, not only on digital, I think it's yep. in every uh, business today that we fail often by not including all stakeholders yep. that need to be included. Uh, yep. And I think we talk about that African proverb where they say, alone, yep. you walk fast, together we walk far. And I think that's a, probably a big critical item for our viewers also to learn for your business. Um, um, interdependence. In the olden days, you were seen to be good to independently come up with something. True. Um, but today, it's just not anymore uh, working because many people have come up independently yes, with many things. Exactly. But interdependently, you'll be able to um, create the impossible. Very, very important yes. uh, point that I also would share with the viewers that um, the independence and I think in interdependence, uh, especially in our business, Yes. Um, is very important um, yeah. to include even people that may not have the knowledge on a particular topic. Exactly. They often ask questions which are relevant or indirectly relevant yeah. by triggering other questions again. Yeah. And I think it's a very important part, Absolutely. a lesson to be learned yes. from an all-inclusive um, um, independent discussion. Absolutely. And, and you couldn't be more right because today we're talking about, you know, uh, breaking the silos. Yeah. We have these pockets in the, in the business that each one does his own bit. And back in the days, you intru intruding in my, in my pocket, it seemed like, uh, you know, invasive. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, there's no territory. We're all one team and we better stick together to, to actually go far, to your sure. point. 
And to that, I think I put together a great example of company that actually embraced digital innovation. Um, and uh, what I've done is that uh, I put that GIF of a shuttle <laughs> going to the moon, <laughs> just to give a, uh, just to tickle a bit the imagination. Is really about that. Is really how distant you can imagine. Go for it, and and let's then work out. Let's transform an idea into an action plan. Otherwise, it will just remain on the table. So this is what New York Times did. New York Times is one of those companies that is absolutely applying a data-driven business. So their intelligence is data-driven, meaning that the Nike case, they don't just accumulate and collect. They actually start looking at that structure, structuring that deck of data, they start funneling, they start segmenting, and therefore gaining insights, which makes them win in the marketplace, but also improves the experience that they provide to their customers. So currently, the New York Times um, can count 2.2 million of subscribers, and that is 70% of their overall subscribers, meaning that we have still a 30% that they prefer to receive the newspaper. But in a world where people are so busy and always looking at their mobile, this is how they manage to mm -hmm. digitally transform their business model. Mm -hmm. The other impressive company... And before yep. you go to IKEA, uh, the next example is, uh, I think it's one, once again an example um, that uh, for opportunities for uh, Namibian where yes. to draw up your own newspaper or, yeah. um, you know, if you are relevant and you understand data and so yeah. forth, that it's very yeah. likely yeah. that uh, you may have your own New York Times. Absolutely. We'll call it the There's a tile no, Times or whatever. There is opportunity. There's a lot of possibility out there. Yeah, and so deep. While I'm not uh, familiar with... Um, um, with the local newspaper and their business model, uh, I can observe that they're definitely uh, have already migrated right, to yeah. online opportunities. The, I think to your point, uh, Sven, actually it's very true. It's about what do you do with, your, with that data? How can you structure to then nourish your strategy? And, and you're right, is the biggest, biggest challenge but you, we need to start somewhere. That is, the, the, I think, the bottom line. Sure. Um, yeah, sorry, IKEA was... Uh, I love IKEA. <laughs> yeah. In the sense of... Like many people do. They, absolutely, because they don't stop there with the wardrobe. They provide you content. But one of the brilliant things that IKEA did is, uh, and I'm not sure whether this is, uh, it's probably popular in Europe, but they have, they partner with TaskRabbit. TaskRabbit is your way of um, actually hiring renting the service of somebody, somebody putting together the wardrobe for you. <laughs> there are all those jokes about, you know, how does the manual, you know, uh, the IKEA manual, the brochure, how do I put together this wardrobe? So actually with Task Rabbit, you can task somebody to come home and do it for you, which is a brilliant, is really about looking into the data that they were uh, capturing and understanding that that was a need, that that was something that the customers requested for beyond just looking online what's pretty. Uh, they also are big in the usage of Internet of Things. But uh, maybe the one that actually is very big on that is Walmart. Um, Walmart, um, apart from establishing their own e-commerce platform, and that is important because differently from Toyota Zaras that failed in creating their own e-commerce, that therefore they had to give everything to Amazon, Walmart was like, hold on, we're going to create our e-commerce e platform. And this is, that is where they gain uh, analytics and understanding and insights about their customers, and they deliver an experience. But um, most interestingly enough, and connected to the IKEA Internet of Things, um, Walmart actually is starting using what, what is called RPA, which is rob uh, robotic prog programming of um, uh, um, uh, automation. Meaning they've got robots <laughs> actually putting your clothes in the shelves or cleaning the floor. So probably but, that is but, overwhelming, correct? But does that mean we all lose our jobs in the future? Or how does it work? <laughs> I mean... yeah. It's it's one of the questions that um, people usually advance with RPA, you know, with robotics. Are, are we going to lose our jobs? Absolutely, and it is a hot topic. Walmart CEOs 
answer to that, so I'm not even going to use my answer, was yes, there is this transition, but it is a transition because we are opening better opportunities, better possibility for the future. So the, the future of jobs is something that is highly discussed. Um, we discuss it in our company, we discuss it in the network of digital experts and so forth. We discuss it internationally, even on documentaries and on your platform. Yeah. I so, think it's a very important topic. Yeah. And I think uh, let's uh, have a look on uh, the slide, how skills have changed just in five years. Yes. The need for the skills. Yes. And as we can see here, mm. dramatic shifts. Absolutely. There is, uh, this is the, prompted by the World Economic Forum. So what the World Economic Forum did is that um, they started tracking. So I would like to say to you, there's also a 2025. Uh, I think we're still waiting for, uh, for that. Uh, but this is what they tracked in the past five years. So you can see that pieces like critical thinking was a number four and then suddenly went number two position. But uh, more, more interesting is the notion of emotion intelligence, emotional intelligence. So we did not speak about emotional intelligence back in the days at all. It was a soft skill that either you have or you don't have it is not something that, uh, you know, you can grow. But uh, what does it mean? I mean, for, do you mean like a digital person must be... Emotionally intelligent? Oh my gosh, yes. And how does it become one? A lot, especially when you do transformation. <laughs> because of the three pillars, having to do, uh, having to take care of the mindset and of the culture, uh, making sure that the processes make sense, and actually who, who, whoever is the user, it, it comes intuitive to them to use. So emotional intelligence is actually one of the key pieces of transformation. Um, but it doesn't stop there, correct? We know that also in your in our normal life. And I think um, emotional intelligence also, once again, from a leadership point of view, um, is something which I believe is very, very important. Um, yeah. It is to be able, in your teams, when you build your businesses and so forth, to be able to yes. see, um, you know, where are people in, uh, in their well-being and their yeah. thinking and, yeah. and their opportunity to see something more... Uh, um, in them, you know, to, 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 to allow them to be in the best version. And then now we've got it in, 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 yeah. in even in the digital little uh, sphere. Absolutely. I think if we just can come back to a slide as well to, on the skills. Um, there's another very important one is the number 10. Oh, yes. A cognitive uh, flexibility. Who would have thought, you know, ranking number 10? I have a feeling that cognitive flexibility is going to rank in among the number, the first five in a few years. What uh, cognitive flexibility refers to is the ability of repurposing probably a set of skills that you have. And also, which implies being able to adapt and, and displaying agility of doing so. Mm. It was very interesting. The other day I asked uh, my team while we were going through one of these decks um, of, of training on digital. Um, so what is your um, understanding of agility? And it's pretty impressive, the different notions. But in a nutshell, everybody concurred on the fact that agility is how do you survive in a way that is smart, mm. and how do you do it in a time which actually brings results, which is probably overarching the whole digital piece. The one other point that I wanted to, to actually highlight is creativity, from number 10 to number three. Creativity, um, probably in the old traditional mindset, is referred to arts, design, and so forth couldn't be more wrong because creativity has to do a, a mathematician like, um, you know, uh, Einstein was a brilliant creative person. So creativity is that uh, ability of imagining beyond what is actually available now. And that's something that only human being can do. And I remember we had a few conversation about creativity in the backstage just the other day with Malkis as well. Before we go, uh, to Melky's back. Um, we've got a question from Rainer Engelbrecht. Mm. He says, in Namibia, we are in two worlds. When it comes to online shopping, 
At the first world countries, it is a norm to do online shopping, but it seems to struggle in Namibia. Is it safe? Is it something that we as SMEs need to look into? I'm a coffee supplier and distribution, and it was something I was looking at, but did not get feedback or the results in the exercise. Oh, interesting. Wow. No, it is. So look, in Europe as well, back in the days when it started, it, to, to his point, most of the question was, is it safe? Can I use my credit card? Is it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there are governing um, authorities and bodies like the GDPR, which governs data, which should be out there making sure that, you know, your, your um, rights as a citizen online, which is a global citizen, uh, are in par and that you are uh, protected in that sense. But uh, to, so to understand the trends, probably that comes from different sources and different influencing pieces within the economy. Mm. But uh, it is no doubt by me that this is something that it will get quite a fast track in Namibia as well. Mm. The trends speak quite clearly about that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, and that's a, that makes me think now uh, the question here and that uh, whether SMEs needs to look at, I mean, I can tell you straight away, the mm. answer is yes. <laughs> you will have to look at no, yes. no two ways about it. Yes. But how? That's the question. Yeah. And I heard you talking to Malkis, uh, our participant of last week, yes. about a hackathon. Ah, yes, yes. So we discussed uh, a hackathon. So just for the audience that maybe heard this uh, term for the first time, hackathon is uh, um, basically a merging between hacking and marathon. So hackathon is, uh, or, or back in the days, was also referred to a code fest, um, is usually referred to uh, an event where um, specialists in the world of software, digital technology at large, uh, gathers together around a topic. So they want to solve a problem. So what problem do we want to solve? Is it has to do with healthcare? Does it have to do with agriculture? Does it have? And through technology, they develop an app, a software, um, whichever solution it is, or they device um, in these design sprints. So these design sprints then usually get sponsored by uh, a company, mm -hmm. a group that actually is in need, sometimes the government, and, and they become reality which is a fantastic way to bring to life what otherwise would be idling in, in the cells of a brain of a person, correct? Uh, they are very popular in Europe, um, in the States, uh, in the Western world, but it's also very new, huh? So it's not, uh, it's just a few years that Akathon have, have become really, really a big portion of, uh, of how companies go there and crowdsource uh, solutions mm -hmm. from actually people. Sure as opposed to, you know, looking always inside and having the, the solution inside within their business. Mm. I mean, if you look at this example, I mean, that's why I'm thinking of Reno here. Mm. Um, you know, is it, you know, the whole online shopping, is it safe or, you know, mm. um, you know, about the, uh, the, what are the opportunities in the, as he's a coffee supplier yes. and distributor? Yeah. I mean, how would that work? I have a, a that's a question. Shop. Yes. Right? How would I now do it with Hackathon? Oh, interesting. So probably we would have to understand if, uh, what is the challenge? Is there a challenge? So for him to set up an e-commerce, probably uh, that is one uh, piece of the, of the puzzle. But then if he struggles necessarily with something, then, you know, uh, within um, his sphere of business, then an Hackathon would be a gathering of people that actually know how to create software as an app and then create something out of that. Uh, maybe the, the one idea, like on my feet, putting it out there, it could be an app that tells you which is the closest coffee shop that I can go to. So things like that. And this is where the specialists participating in the hackathon will start developing something that makes sense, is GPS connected, uh, provides data, provides analytics, and so forth. So to be honest with you, there's no limit, it's limitless. And probably the earlier uh, one um, starts devising around it, uh, the higher the options of, uh, of actually for it to be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the, and, and that's where we had some thinking about this um, technology here and thought about the hackathon. 
um, what, the, what are the possibilities. And I, we just thought, you know, are there items or things that you are struggling with? And uh, being at the online shopping, I think yeah. one of the, uh, one, one, one thing's for sure for the online shopping, I mean, yeah. COVID yes. definitely will Ooh. help to accelerate it. There's no to be Oh my it. gosh, yes. But there will Overnight. be for many business a number of issues here. And, uh, you know, if there's an issue you have at the moment as a mm. business, as an SME in this case. Yes. Um, uh, we were asking you, you know, maybe yep. you can share with us what that mm. is. And I don't know what is the possibility that we have our own Namibia hackathon. Cool. That, I think and that is a superb idea. Um, I hear it. So if you could have, if you could solve a current issue in Namibia, you're saying, how... Could we do that through an hackathon or what would you prioritize? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I think there's space also for talented young people here in Namibia to, to show their arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or uh, even um, members in the government. Every now and then some friends, they, they tell me, but what about uh, you know, an app that would create this efficiencies and facilitate this type of problems and so forth? Definitely, that is what an hackathon would do. Um, during the COVID times, obviously creating events, we, we are aware that uh, we are at different stages with the measurements from governments and so forth. We, we will need to take precautions, but probably something that could be absolutely seriously looked into uh, in the near future, absolutely. Yeah, and it's something that every Namibian can participate in? Probably, they will. each hackathon has a criteria uh, for which uh, you can actually participate uh, if you have XYZ projects or XYZ um, sort of abilities or, you know, there, there is usually a criteria. So it depends really for, from Akathon to Akathon. But uh, the, the brilliant point is that it does bring together people from all walks of life or even from all types of different fields and different disciplines. And that usually where is that uh, brilliant sweet spot that usually triggers the best in human beings, and especially when it talks to creativity. Yeah, I think um, in this post-COVID um, time at the moment, and uh, we know, as Lucy May referred to, um, that we are opening up. Um, yeah. There's probably many, many different ways of how we're going to con conduct business going yeah. forward. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. It yes. is whatever we do going forward is a increased attention to, um, yeah. you know, the, 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 the prevent, um, you know, or being more, uh, what do you call it, uh, from a, sens a sanitizing point of view. Oh, yes. Um, uh, sensitive uh, and overcome that and still have a life. I think yes, one exactly. thing for sure, um, we still want to be yeah. in social contact uh, going forward and, and, you yes. know, for sure, but maybe there's a different way and that can be, uh, maybe there's some opportunities that one um, um, need to look into. Yeah, uh, interesting. COVID and yeah. having a life post yes. COVID on top. Now, on uh, on the hackathon, uh, please share with us uh, some of uh, the challenges you have, and we we may see then what we can create. Perhaps we can do what we said just now. Create that. It's being sponsored by uh, by a company or even by ourselves. We we'll mm. see how we. Yeah. how we could do that. Um, and uh, in that case, we, you can invite anyone and uh, even Namibians who are not maybe here, they're abroad, can participate. And for sure, these are the, 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 that's the need we have to access everybody's thoughts and ideas. Um, and you may sit anywhere in, <laughs> uh, in such a situation um, and to contribute to an and uh, to something as solution. Yeah. Maybe one can share that with government and so forth. But I think the one thing, if we want to change things, let's stand up and do something about this. And uh, maybe, maybe there, 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 there's a real uh, great, great next opportunity, great yeah. next jobs. So um, with us, I'd like to really thank you, everyone, for having tuned in. Please don't forget to let us know about uh, whether there's a better timing um, that you would like us to have the live one. Of course, you can always um, uh, click on the show, which you will find on 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 my uh, Sven site. And then I'd like to thank um, Selma, who um, has been today 
first time with us and will be with us going forward. Um, you know all from NBC, of course. <laughs> and then Lucy May, thank you very much uh, you. for being here with us today. And uh, I'm looking forward to see all of you next week.